Everybody's always asking me for tours of the studio or to hear some of my gear. So I thought I'm going to demo some of the amplifiers that I have sitting behind me. And we may make this a series and call it the Amp Show. We'll see how it comes out here. But I have my good friend Dave Ronorado that's going to help me out with this. Here we go. We're going to showcase two amplifiers. The first being an orange overdrive 80 watt. It's actually a reissue from around 1990, 91. And the other amp is a Sound City 50. So Dave's going to go through and talk about the amp a bit, and then we're going to check it out. Dave? Well, what we have here is a uh, early 90s reissue orange OR80, 80, 80 watt, EL34 power tubes. Really basic, straight one channel amp. Um, no channel switching, no boost, anything like that. It does have an effects loop on the front. Um, but basically, it's just a one channel amp. You got a high and a low gain input here. This is basically the what they call a frequency uh, control, and it's a five way rotary, and each position has less bass in it as you go clockwise. clockwise. Uh, bass, treble presence, gain knob, master, power switch, and that's it. So these were really the first reissue that. Uh, was made of these amps after the 70s. This particular one was made by Trace Elliott and was sold through Gibson. And uh, they're pretty rare. You don't, they were only made a couple of years. Um, they stuck pretty true to the original design, so they sound really close to a real 70s one. One, uh, one of the things that I read, I don't know if it's true, that they actually had parts from the factory that they used. Some of them they did. In um, these, even I'm, the face, face yeah, plates some of the were face original plates. from the 70s. Yeah, yeah, and the bars and stuff like that, and the knobs. Um, there was another amp called Green Amps, too, yeah. um, that were around, Mata Amps. The Mata and Green Amps um, are actually a little more heavy as far as the gain. So they're actually used by like Fu Manchu and bands like that, you know, Cuss. And but those this, kind of but this amp is yeah. great for these kind of things. Yeah, it's incredibly yeah. creamy in the mid range. It's, it's a killer so sounding amp. Okay, so before we start, I want to talk about the microphones and the mic priest. Okay, so we're using a pair of, well, this is actually a B, uh, Brent Averill 1073 that was originally out of a Neve console, and this is a BAE 1073, which are really really killer. Mike Priest. I'm running them flat. There's no EQ. You don't, you don't see the EQ buttons in here on either one. So we're running them flat for this video. So we're using this Marshall checkerboard reissue cabinet with 25 watt greenbacks. On this speaker, I have a Shure SM57 between the dust cover and the rest of the speaker. And the 421 is between midpoint between the two speakers. I like to record using both speakers because it actually is much better in phase than miking the same speaker. If you think about the three to one principle, uh, it actually sounds sounds much better and much more in phase. <laughs> Nice mid-range, really good, like tight low end. It's not crapping out in the low end. But that real nice kind of tight mids that are they're real focused, especially for like open chords. So it's real tight, but it's got definition to it. It's not getting real dark. With like dissonant notes in it. Um, and then lead wise, it's it's got that real kind of Jimmy Page type thing to it, which is cool. It's like kind of glassy, not super creamy, but it still kind of has that real classic rock kind of tone to it. So it really gets both best of both worlds with it. And what's great about this amp that I love about it is we're basically we're about halfway up on it. So the more the more you dime it, the more it's even going to sing. And especially what I've noticed with this amp is that the Greenback 25s, when this amp was made, it came with two cabinets. It came with Greenback 25s loaded in one cabinet, and you, then you could get 75 watt Celestians also for the 120 head, because it had a lot, it had you know a little more power, and the 25s would have definitely blown with the 120. So um, I prefer this amp with 25s personally, but you can you know you can use anything. There's vintage 30s, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, um, but for the classic kind of this tone, these are 25s, and you can kind of hear it. It's just got that real kind of you know. You know. So it just has that real tight kind of cut, you know, Angus kind of. It's 
If you look at old pictures of Led Zeppelin, you'll see Jimmy Page playing some old oranges. They're not exactly these ones. They're, yeah, they didn't have as much gain, so they were actually turning these up even louder. But basically, the preamp is very, very, very similar. That's why they ended up adding the master volume to yeah. them, actually, is yeah. to give them so that you wouldn't have to crank them up. Yeah, the too late loud. 70s people were just complaining they were too loud, and, and oranges and high watts were the loudest amps oh. ever. So <laughs> insane. Next, we're going to check out the Sun City 50. Now, for the first go round, we're going to use the exact same Marshall cabinet with the 25 watt greenbacks. Through the knee 1073s, I've got two mics again on it. I've got a 57 on one speaker and a 421 on the other speaker. Dave, tell us about the amp. Okay, for this go around, we're gonna do a early 70s Sound City 50R head. Uh, like Rick said, we're going through Greenback 25s in a straight front checker reissued Marshall cab, at, set at 16 ohms. This amp is basically set up like a four input Marshall um, with uh, a normal and a bright channel, two volumes for each channel, then a three band EQ, which is actually kind of an active EQ in this amp. It's, it's much more, uh, it sweeps through fre frequencies a lot easier or more than, than like a typical Marshall. So um, typically these amps are a little bit cleaner. They're not as gainy um, in, in the, the crunch. They're a little bit more like a, well, you'll see, they're, they're kind of almost like a basement, a Fender basement pegged out. Uh, they get like that cool kind of stonesy kind of uh, who, early who kind of gain. Um, I'm using just normal PAF pi style pickups, mission pickups. These are like 8K, 9K, they're not super hot, so most of the gain, it's all coming from this. These are actually loaded with EL34 power tubes. We are cascading the channel, so we're hooking the normal and the, the bright channel together, and what that does is it gives you a little bit more gain and a little bit more EQ, and, uh, and you can blend the bass of the first channel and the treble with the second channel together, much like a Marshall 4 input 50 watt or 100 watt. Um, this one does have reverb, but we're not gonna run the reverb because that's just silly. Basically, this amp is what I like to consider, it's kind of like um, an economical high watt in a lot of ways. It has the same sort of tone, it's not quite as loud, and it has its own thing too. And these were made by Dallas Arbiter, who were the guys who made the fuzz face, round fuzz face pedals for Jimi Hendrix, and did a lot of stuff in the early, um, early 70s, mainly was their heyday uh, in England. <laughs> You can see how much the volume really affects this amp too. This is um, very much touch sensitive amp. Um, you know, you can roll it way back. It's similar to a high watt when you roll it back like yeah. that. It's got a really crystal, crystalline sound to it. Really great for clean. Classic 50s, that's like, your, that's 50 your Pete Townsend. I have the original cabinet that goes with this amp that has four tens in it, so let's check it out. Okay, so what we have here is the original uh, Sound City 50 410 cab that came with the 50R head, and it's got this cool old uh, kind of looks like kind of like a speckled, like late 60s high watt. Uh, cloth and what's cool about this is it's a, a closed back cabinet so it's front loaded so the back doesn't come off so you actually have to pull this off to get to the speakers and they're just on velcro and what's cool is there here's the tens of these these are about 25 watt tens um, they were made by a few different companies at the time um, CTS um, Fane made some of them it just kind of depends on the era of the amp I believe these are CTS without pulling them um, and you'll see quite a bit of difference, uh, or at least hear quite a bit of difference in this between this and the Greenback 25s. This will be a little more probably mid-range and it'll probably gain out a lot more too, actually. And this is a 16 ohm cabinet. We've been running that amp at 16 ohms, which typically with most British amps, they sound better at 16 ohms for some reason. They just they just do. Uh, you can run them at eight and four, which is fine, but typically 16 for, for the more heavy gain stuff sounds better. So once again, with the Sound City cabinet, I'm miking it the same way. I have the 
Sennheiser 421 in between the dust cover and the edge of the cone. And with the 57, I have it between the dust cover and the actual cone. So it's more in the center. So this SM57 is picking up the top end. This is picking up the mids and the bottom end. And I'm going to blend the two mics in Pro Tools. I'm going to have Dave run through the tone controls because they actually have, uh, there's a lot of variation that you can do with this amp as opposed to the orange. Uh, Dave? Yeah, so basically we have a four input Marshall here. And what you have is, is a normal volume, which is more of a bass uh, channel. Then you have a brilliant volume, which is more of a high end channel, a uh, brighter channel. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back between the two. I'll, I'll bring one up, bring one down. And when you cascade on this particular amp, between the two channels together, you actually make the EQ a little more active. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I go roll back between each control. Um, again, I'm just running this clean. I'll, I'll start kind of low on this, clean it up. I'll bring it up, and then I'll bring the gains in and out so you can see which channel's doing what on, on this amp. Once again, we're running through the Sound City cabinet, this time with the 410s. Yeah. All right, this is the normal bass channel that I'm just turning up. The, the brilliant is completely off, so it's just this one channel right now. <laughs> about four. That's about six. to it with this, with the head. This is really pushing that Because this, this amp is really touch sensitive like the orange was, and so the more you dig into it, and especially with this cabinet, the more it's compressing, and you can really feel it while you're playing it. It's sagging quite a bit when you really hit hardcore. <laughs> Great rhythm amp. This amp will record really well, and if you mix it with another amp, like Cascade two amps together, it really sound good. Because this one tends to be a little cleaner, so it's it's more it's better for rhythm stuff, in my my opinion. Uh, so all right, so now that that was just a normal volume flat out. I've got the treble basically on three. The middle is on a four. I've got the, <laughs> I've got the bass rolled way out on this. It's like a two because it's really pushing those tens it, hard. It really will. It really. Uh, farts out when yeah, it's... and I'll, I'll show you what this will do. Just I'll go through the controls here. So this is the treble All the way off it's About halfway That's wide open yeah. And I don't have the brilliant control in it at all yet, so we're <laughs> We got a lot of tap end. In yes, this. it's it's really high endy. All right, now this will be the mid control, all the way off first. Halfway. Quite a bit different. Yeah. And so this, and then wide open. are much much more sensitive than a, than a Marshall would be yeah they, they have way way more uh, there's much more sweep in them much more sweep in them yeah than, no comparison actually um, and then this will be the, the bass channel or the bass control itself all the way off first <laughs> Yeah, with the 10s, it doesn't push it quite as hard, so it yeah. stays a little tight. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is about halfway. Yeah. 
<laughs> this will be really muddy. We probably don't want to do too much of yeah. that because we could blow up the cabinet. Yeah, we don't want to blow them up. So, and this amp sounds best with the bass rolled off anyways. All right, so now that's just a normal. I'll bring up the, the brilliant volume and I'll mix them between the two and, and then I'll show you how much it really affects the tone controls. So um, I'll just start with the brilliant, the brilliant up like quarter. Good teleamp. Tel just, Telecaster would sound really good through this. This, this amp. amp has a lot of range. Yeah. P90s would sound great through it too. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference just between the channels themselves. That's just a brilliant channel with the normal all the way off. I love the orange. That's one of my favorite sounds, but this amp is, is incredibly versatile because of that EQ. Yeah, and I think the other good thing about this amp too is is you can always, you know, we're not running obviously any pedals into this, so you could always throw this something will take in the pedals front of it. Really well. Yeah, so it's a good platform to start with, much more so than probably a real Marshall because the EQ section is a lot more active in this. So with pedals, it would actually, you know, work even better than probably a Marshall would. So we're gonna go for a vintage amp, and you can find one of these at a good price. This is a real great sleeper amp right here, the Sound City Fifty. Yeah. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can find it on my website. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, you can do so through the Beato Club that you find on our website. And remember to follow Dave on his Facebook. I'll have it in the description below. Thanks for watching.